y'all, Melissa here with you today and I am wearing today's project. We're going to make this summer tank top with little side vents and these bias trim straps that are adjustable in the back. So I have a free pattern that you can use to make this as well as information on how to resize that pattern. And all of that is in the link below. So check that out and then I'll meet you back here to sew this up. All right, let's talk about how to alter the pattern for different sizes. So this pattern um, that I'm holding here, this is a half scale pattern and this is the center front edge here. And we only are, have a pattern for the front because the back is just a square. And this is for a 34 inch bust. So what I'm gonna wanna do is I'm going to want to draw a couple lines here. Um, I want one somewhere about halfway um, down the neckline or so, and it doesn't matter really precisely where you put these vertical lines. I'm gonna want another vertical line at the point of the, where the strap's gonna go. And then I want one about halfway down the arm side. Okay, and then vertically, since this is pretty square, it really, again, this doesn't matter. We're only gonna grade horizontally and then vertically you can just add length. All right, so what I need to do next is I need to cut on those lines. And this pattern is for a 30, four inch bust. So take your full bust measurement and figure out how many total inches you would need to add to 34 to get to your full bust. Let's say you have like a 38 inch bust. This portion of the pattern that I'm working with, this represents a quarter of the total bust circumference, right? Cause it's just half of one side of a uh, half of the front, which is only half of my body. So what you're gonna wanna do is say you need to add four inches. That means you would need to add one inch to each quarter of your body. And that would mean that you would wanna spread these out so that that was a total of one inch added. The majority of what you wanna add is from the shoulder on, not in the center front. So I would probably add like quarter inch here and then I would do three eighths of an inch here and three eighths of an inch here, and that would get me one total inch added here. When I then cut two halves of that, that's two inches that I've added to the pattern. Now again, the back is just a square, so the square for the 34 inch bust is going to be 20 inches wide by 17 inches long. What you wanna do is then you would just wanna add your other two inches to that in this example. So you would do it 22 inches wide by 17 inches long. If you feel like you need to lengthen a little bit, which you may, because um, the more, the larger bust you have, the more fabric has to go out before it comes down. So you do probably wanna add about three eighths of an inch in length for every two inches or so in bust circumference that you're going up. So I would wanna add a total of three quarters of an inch to the bottom of this. It's always better to add a little more than you think you need because you can cut it shorter if you need to, but once you cut your pattern, you don't have, um, once you cut your fabric, you can't like uncut it and add length to it. Another thing you could do after you retrace this and make this your pattern, you might just hold the pattern up to yourself. That's a good way to check, for example, if the point for the straps is falling in the right place, or maybe on your body, you need to keep that strap and you need to add the room here and here. So it's a little bit of experimenting. One other thing, since full size patterns are bigger than a sheet of paper, a couple things you can do, you can tape a bunch of sheets of paper together, or I like to use the backside of wrapping paper to draft patterns on. Especially if you get it on clearance after the holidays, it's an inexpensive way to draft, and a lot of times it has those grid lines for you to cut on anyways, which are helpful to make sure that you are doing you know, parallel and perpendicular lines because they're already gridded out for you. All right, let's talk supplies. So first I've got my front and my back of my pattern, and then I'm using a bunch of bias tape. I've chosen to do a contrast coordinating fabric, 
And you can make your own bias tape if you don't want to buy it or if you have a fabric that you particularly want to use. These are my um, fabrics from my collection, Blooms and Bobbins, and I've got links to where you can purchase these below. But I've also got a link on how to make your own bias tape if you don't know how. It can be really easy. You can get yards and yards of this out of a very small amount of fabric. So check that out if you don't know how to make it. Those are below. So I've got two pieces that I've cut that are 18 inches long of the bias tape, and that's gonna do the front armholes and the straps. I've got two three inch pieces that's gonna go through these rings on the back of the tank. And then I've got two pieces that I cut using the pattern guide for this pattern. I've also got a piece of elastic for the back. Now for my size, this is a 14 inch piece of elastic. If you've changed the sizing, you're going to want to make the elastic longer as well. So you want it to be about 90% of your actual back measurement across the back so that it will stretch a little bit and then kind of hug the back of this to you as you're wearing it. All right, the first step to making this, I've already gone ahead and cheated just a little bit. You're going to take this top part of the tank top and you're going to press the back top edge down about a quarter inch and then you're going to use your 3 8 inch elastic as a guide and you want to make a casing, pressing it again about half an inch so that you have room to encase that elastic. And then we're going to stitch right on this edge. All right, so we are just going to put this in the machine, lower the presser foot, and I want to stitch right on that edge. Okay, this little tool here is called a bodkin, and I like to use it to pull elastic through casings, among other things. I've got a link below to where you can pick these up. Um, you can also just use a safety pin. But what I'm going to do is put my elastic into my bodkin, and then I'm going to use it to pull the elastic through this casing that I made. Make sure you don't pull this end through your casing. Very gently and carefully make sure you're just to the end of the elastic. And then go ahead and pin it so that it doesn't go all the way through. And then you want to make sure that you haven't twisted the elastic. So feel along the edge and make sure you haven't twisted it. And once you're sure, you can take the bodkin off and very gently pull that in as well. And also pin it so you don't use, lose the elastic inside. Once you have those pinned, you're going to want to take them to the machine and just sew the ends, backstitch over them a couple times to make sure that that elastic stays put. And then we can set the back of this tank top aside for now. Okay, the next thing we want to work with is this bias tape for the neckline. So what you want to do is unfold it, and we're going to place the two pieces right sides together and match up those peaked edges, which are going to be the point at the center of the neckline. And it helps me to go ahead and stick a few pins in here. And then we're going to go ahead and sew those little peaks. So I'm only going to use a quarter inch seam here. And one tip, when you're sewing really close to the edge of the fabric, I often find that it's helpful to put um, my needle as far to the right as it will go. So that there's plenty of fabric getting fed under the feed dogs and the fabric feeds um, easily through there. Okay, once you have sewn the little peaks, I know it's hard to see the white fabric on the white table, but you're going to want to snip into that center dip there, and then we'll be able to fold, there we go, and you can see how it makes that little V that is going to go in the center front 
of the tank. So let's apply that now. All right, before we sew this on, we're going to need to gather the edges of the front neckline edges of this tank to match the length of this bias tape. So what you're going to need to do is sew a basting stitch along these two edges. Now a basting stitch is just the longest stitch your machine will do unless you have a dedicated basting stitch on your machine. So I'm just going to stitch and then I'm not going to cut my thread, but I am going to pull out some extra and then I will stitch up the other side. And again, I want some tails to work with, so I'm going to cut the thread myself. And I'm going to move the needle all the way over to the right and I'm going to do one more line of stitching. It's always easier to gather with multiple stitching lines. All right, once I have those gathering or basting stitches sewn in so that I can gather, I am going to cut these ones in the center, cut my threads, and then I am going to pin my binding to the center here and then gather and just evenly spread those gathers. It's not very much gathering here. Just evenly spread those until this is the same length as my bias tape. And I need to repeat that on the other side. There we go. Once I have those gathers done, then I am ready to pin on the bias tape. And then we're going to stitch right in that crease line that is closest to the raw edge. Okay, once that is sewn on, you can go ahead and remove the basting threads entirely. And then you can wrap this around to the wrong side and that will cover and finish off those raw edges. And then sew this right side up right along that edge and it will catch that bottom edge and you'll be done with the front neck one. And there is the front neckline finished. Let's start working on the straps. So the first thing we're going to want to do with the straps is sew up some of these pieces of bias tape. And actually, instead of cutting two three inch pieces, you could have cut a six inch piece and then cut this after we finish it. But all we're gonna do is stitch right along that edge to close up these pieces of bias tape so they don't unfold anymore. On the strap pieces, we're gonna sew approximately four inches of it closed and leave the rest of it open. I've moved my needle all the way to the right so that I can sew right along this edge and still have plenty of fabric going under the feed dogs. If I had left it in the center position, I would have to put my fabric over here and I would be fighting it more because it would want to pull sideways into the machine. And if the feed dogs don't pick up right off the bat, you can always just push it in a little further manually and then continue to stitch. It can also help if you do one right after the other like that because you can use the back one to continue to pull the thread and help pull this one into the feed dogs. Now I'm going to take these and I'm going to be placing these where I want the rings to go. And I'm going to come in approximately four inches from the outer edge and that's where I'm going to want my strap to fall. Um, you can change this depending on your preferences. 
I always, I have a narrow back, so I like to air towards going too far towards center, because if I go too far out to the sides, then the straps start falling off my shoulders. So you take one of the pieces and put it through one of the rings, and then you're gonna fold it in half and place it Another way you can tell where you want yours, and um, you may want to compare it to, for example, like a bra that you own. Um, just remember that bras stretch, so maybe stretch the band out as much as it is when you wear it, and then check the backs, or you can look at, like if there's a tank top that you already have, you can use that as a guide for where you want the straps. Unfortunately, the way this is constructed, you do have to choose where you're going to want those back straps to hit before we construct everything else. So it's always better, I think, to err on the side of too far towards the center. Once these are pinned, then we can take this over to the machine and stitch those. Because we are sewing over a bulky area here, I like to use my self-leveling foot. I have a different video of how to use a self-leveling foot if you don't know how, so that is linked below, but you'll see me use it here. So just stitch across and then back stitch. And you may wonder why I'm not finishing this little part of the seam. This is bias tape, and in general, bias tape is not going to fray because it's cut on the bias, so I just don't even worry about it. Okay, once you've got those sewn on, go ahead and trim up any threads that you have. And now we need to work with the sliders. So, take the ends of the straps that you sewed closed, and you're going to want to thread that through the slider. So in one side, and then back out the other. And then get this down to as little fabric folded over as you can and still get this under your presser foot. And we're going to do a very narrow um, stitch right across there to hold this slider on. Once you've got both of those sewn, you're going to want to trim off threads. Okay y'all, I've gone ahead and I have threaded one of the straps on already. Let me show you how I did that. So you want your top, the back, the back laying right side up, and then you want to take your strap and you want to make sure that it opens to the inside of the tank, towards the center back, not towards the side seam. Then you're going to bring it up through the ring. And then you want to poke the end through the slider. It helps if you have fingernails when you get to this part to kind of help you pull the strap through. And then thread that strap through all the way until you get to the part that you stitched and passed it. You want to have a little extra. And then we need to thread through the other end of the slider. And I always find it helpful to pull on the folded end of the bias tape, not the opened end, because if you pull on the open end, it is easier to end up with a twisted strap. Go and make sure that you are up past where you stitched so that the opening is further down. And again, make sure that your bias tape is opening towards the center back. Once we have these straps threaded, then we're ready to add them to the front side and finish off the straps. So make sure that you keep them untwisted and then get your front and put it neck side toward you. And again, really just keep checking to make sure that you have not twisted this fabric. You're going to finish off those armhole edges with the bias tape. So what helps me is to kind of like sandwich it over the edge. And this is not how I'm going to sew it, but this at least, if I pin it, I know which edge is going to get sewn where. And I can double check that my strap isn't twisted by the time it gets to the back. 
because you are going to have to twist it to sew it here in a second. So I just like to add some pins and make sure I'm starting out in the right place. All right. Once I know that it's not, that I've got the correct edge and everything, what I'd like to do is kind of hold myself to that edge and then unfold my bias tape so that I have the correct raw edges against each other and then pin to be able to sew. All right, so I will stitch right in that crease line there. And again, if it helps, just kind of fold your edges back around and double check again before you stitch this or baste it and then pull your pins and check. But I really can't emphasize enough that you're gonna be mad at yourself if these straps get twisted from front to back because you have to take them all off and start over. So I would really recommend if you're not positive that you did it right to baste this line and then double check before you stitch it for real. Once you have stitched that, then like I said, you fold it back all around so we're finishing that raw edge again. And then what you're going to do is you're going to stitch on the right side all the way up and continue stitching until you get to your stitching line from before so that this strap is entirely finished off. And there we go. All I need to do is trim off some threads and you can see that this side is finished. Um, this strap anyway, and all I need to do is do the same thing on the other side. Okay y'all, I have finished off those front armholes and at this point we're ready to sew the side seams. So fold your, sh your shirt so that you've got the front and the back right sides together and you want to match up the top edge of your bias tape with the top edge of that elastic casing and go ahead and pin it and if by chance you got off a little bit on um, either your casing or your bias edge you want to make sure they match at the top and you can trim the bottom edge to make it even but we are just going to whip this seam through the sewing machine and use a 5 8 inch seam allowance and then you want to make sure that you stop three inches up on the bottom hem edge because we're going to create little side bits. I'm going to show you how to do that. All right, five eighths inch seam back stitch at the top. Stop and back stitch at the last pin. All right, once you have gotten those side seams sewn, what you're going to want to do is Open your tank top so that you're looking at the side seam and you want to use an iron and press this open. Make sure you press it on the wrong side and then double check on the right side that you haven't inadvertently created any folds around the seam line. Make sure it's nice and flat. And you're also going to make sure that you're pressing even that part that you didn't sew because this is the vent that we're going to be making here. Okay, once you have finished pressing that, then what you want to do, I'm going to show you because I did it on the other side. You want to take your raw edge and press it back towards the seam allowance. So now I've got a folded edge here and all my raw edges are encased inside. And lower down around the vent, what that's going to look like here is that I won't have any raw edges sticking out on my vent. I'll be stitching around like that. So I don't need to pin this because this fabric is holding pretty well. You may need to add pins depending on what kind of fabric you're using to keep these folds in place. But what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to stitch right down this whole edge.
down here for my vent. I'm going to pick up, I'm going to turn, I'm going to stitch across the bottom, and then turn again and stitch up this edge. And when I get to the top of the vent, I'm going to go across. And then I'm going to stitch on that fold on the other side of the vent. And across the bottom and, now I, and then I can sew all the way back up the other side seam. All right, y'all, once you have your side seams all finished up, all that is left to do is to take the bottom edges, fold them up twice, and I'm going to use that to sew a hem. At the side vents here, you are doing the exact same thing. You're just folding it up twice so that that raw edge gets enclosed. You can pin if you need help holding them in, but this fabric is holding the pressing pretty well. need to trim up my threads and turn this right side out. And there is my tank top.